Hello everyone and welcome to yet another build of mine. This time we got a Death Knight. Um, for those of you that know my like three Forgotten God streams, you probably still remember my uh, Devarthan DK, which, uh, which died like in early FG stages. But yeah, today I'm gonna show you like basically the Leviathan DK 2.0. So, first of all, I'm gonna talk about this character and show you skill allocation points, um, devotion points, gear, etc. And then after that, I will also show you like two different um, easier to make builds because this build again is using the Shadow Ram set, and I know that's very much not beginner friendly. So, yeah, if you wanna like check out more beginner friendly gear and devotion setups, feel free to like uh, check out. The more beginner friendly setups. Um, I will also post like the Grim Tools links for those down below as well. But yeah, for now let's start off with the uh, skill allocation for this character. So, I mean, the Cadence is obviously our main attack. Vyathan got changed around even more so to benefit like a Cadence centered playstyle. So yeah, we got like 26 out of 16 points in Cadence, one point in the fighting form. This is only really worth do like soft cap when you're playing a ranged character. When you're playing melee, it's like just a one pointer is enough. And then we got a maxed out deadly momentum as well. 17 out of 12 here. Um, I mean, the more points you can get here, the better. Like, certainly 22 out of 20, or like 22 out of 12 would be way better. But I mean, this is like as hard as you could go with the setup, the Shadow Ram set. So, yeah, pretty good still. Um, then also, since this is like a default attack replacer. And it can proc weapon pool skill on the first and second hit, but not on the third hit. Um, but at least like for first and second hit, we're using some weapon pool skills like Markovian's, Markovian's advantage here, Zolan's technique, which actually you might also take out because Zolan's has like a kind of a like longish animation speed, so it might actually end up having like more DPS if you spec out of Zolan's here, but. I mean, it's okay, like, it's, like, we're already kind of slow attacking, so, I don't know, like, maybe it's actually better without soul hands, but I didn't really test it out, maybe I should actually, but, yeah. For now, we got, like, one point here, which gives us, like, 22% chance to use this attack. Oh, uh, yeah, we got, like, 120 degree arc, 3 target maximum, so that's, like, a little bit more AoE than without having soul hands, right? Um, let's also move on to the other skills and passives, so, Fighting Spirit... Um, soft cap at 12 out of 12, very nice, uh, well, proc for any soldier, should have at least a one pointer here, either like one point or like, well, as many as you can afford, but like, you should probably never over cap this, like, soft cap is always like, good enough. Um, and we got the min here as well, since you're using a two-hander, this only works with a shield and a two-hander. Um, very nice circuit breaker, really good, activates one and half, drops to 33% HP. And basically heals you up to like, well, 73% up, right? And uh, yeah, just one pointer here as well. One point gives us six points here. Nice uh, circuit breaker. Uh, military conditioning. This is a very nice passive for like, any soldier as well. Um, you should always soft cap this or put it to like 11 out of 10. Like 11 out of 10 is also like kind of a sweet spot still because you got like 1% more physique and more 1% HP. Or like the 11th point as well but i would probably never put more than 11 points here because as you can see like the next one is only gonna give you like one percent hp but not even one percent physique on top so it's kind of not that great so yeah military conditioning either at 10 or 11 out of 10 is pretty nice veteran c well yeah just the one pointer here it's not really that good of a uh, passive but it's like okay um i mean you can also like pull more points from physique and like put more points into cunning if you want to like make this build more like aggressive. Uh, and for that, veteran C is also kind of good because then you have to like you don't have to like put that many points into your attribute points for physique, right? Um, to like equip your armor. Anyway, let's move on. Decorated soldier, eight out of eight. This is just really good for slow resistance and elemental resistance. Um, yeah, soft cap is like the best value here. Really good passive. Uh, Scarlet of Battle. Uh, I would like say this is almost as good as Decorated Soldier as well. 
gives you like armor absorption for free, bleeding reduction, stun reduction, freeze reduction. But since we have like all over capped stun and freeze already, um, this is just a one pointer. Um, but on different soldiers, like uh, you probably want to like soft cap this as well. Like this is really good at soft cap as well. But we don't really need uh, those resistances on this character, so it's just a one pointer here. Um, another like aura that we have, field command. Oh, well, this is like super good. Rant gives you like more increased armor and offensive ability and defensive ability. We just max this out to like get the most DA and OA out of this, and also like the most armor. Uh, squad tactics, on the other hand, um, kind of has huge diminishing returns for hard cap points. So you always want to like only soft cap this for like 14% attack speed, 85% all damage. Really good. Uh, we got a one pointer in Counter Strike. Like you don't have to use this, you can also like pull a point from this, but um, it's like okay-ish because we have like a two-hander and this is even weapon damage, so like you have a two-hander and like weapon damage on this, it's decent amount of damage. But yeah, just a one-pointer here as well. Um, for movement, we obviously have Blitz, just a one-pointer here, and then we also have Blindside, this is actually maxed out to like reduce enemy DA by 285. Um, you could also like put this down to like a one pointer and instead max at Markovian's advantage and that way you would have like a little bit less DA reduction but like a stronger weapon pool skill which might actually be better like single target at least this is certainly better AoE but uh, like both of those like either you max out this or you max out those but usually it's not worth it to max out both of them right because these like uh, DA reduction doesn't stack so only like the highest will apply um, Warcry, the next active skill here, really really good for any soldier as well. Uh, always like worth it to soft cap, 12 out of 12 here, reduce target's damage by 5 seconds by 25%, or 5 seconds by 25%. Really really strong, basically yeah, helps enemy damage um, by 25%, all of their damage, so yeah, insane ability actually. Um, also we have Break Morale here. This is very good for like physical builds, obviously. This gives you flat resistance reduction for physical builds. Um, so that's like the most or like the best value at soft cap. But since we have like some spare points, we kind of max this out to 17 out of 12 points. So we have 35%, I mean 35 flat physical re resistance reduction here. Also really good. Um, and then last but not least, our exclusive skill, Order Runs Rage. Uh, it has soft cap here because like diminishing returns for offensive ability are huge for hard cap points, so it's usually not really worth it to like over cap those that much or at all. Um, in this case, yeah, 12 out of 12 gives us 12% offensive ability, 12% movement speed, and uh, like some percent physical damage and internal trauma. Um, but yeah, you could like also like take out some points, break morale, or say some other points that I've mentioned before. Try to max out all runs rage, but I think it's not really that worth it. Let's check out the necromancer. Now this is only our supporter uh, mastery, as you can see. So we have two more weapon pool skills. One is reaping strike. This is like a one pointer as well. We like have twenty five percent chance to use this, and yeah, like pretty nice. Convert the vitality and partial, like part of the aether damage here as well. So yeah, this deals a lot of physical damage as well, and also heals you for quite a bit. And then we also got the Necrotic Edge here, which also has like 25% chance to be used. This has, I believe, actually like 2 points in it. Um, but yeah, we also convert like the Vitality to Physical, like the Vitality Decay to Internal Trauma, as you can see here. And like some of the cold damage also gets converted to Physical. So yeah, it's pretty good uh, weapon pool skill with this build and yeah, synergizes very well with Leviathan. Um, then we got Bone Harvest, which is like our secondary attack. You know, like, aside from Cadence, I would say. Uh, yeah, there's like some cold, some vitality damage, which also gets converted to physical. 100% of the vitality and like 50% of the cold around gets converted to vitality here, air to physical here. And then we got like one pointer in Dread. Basically, Vitality Decay becomes Internal Trauma here as well. Also, this gives us like plus 2 meter range, so that's really good. And then we got the Soul Harvest. This is like the main reason why we use this ability at all. 
because this gives us more flat damage, will be, which can be used for our Cadence attack. Um, so yeah, again, like Vitality, Code Damage, which gets converted to Physical Damage. So yeah, lots of flat physical damage here. Um, Spectral Binding, useful for any Necromancer for the HP and Defensive ability. In this case, also we convert some of the flat Aether damage to Physical. So yeah, Art Cap, this one at 15 out of 12. Uh, Spectral Wrath, this actually gives us 28% physical resistance reduction. And also deals some Vitality Aether, which again gets converted. So yeah, really nice uh, must-have for like any physical Vitality or Aether Necromancer here. Arc of Torment, well, this is a very nice absorption ability, which has like the sweet spot at 6 out of 10. You should always at least have 6 out of 10 points in this one. But diminishing returns after that are pretty huge as well, so yeah, like you can put more points here if you absolutely want to have like that point one more duration, that one percent more absorption. But six out of ten is like the sweet spot in my opinion. Alright, let's move on to the devotions. And since we are using the Shadow Ram set, I actually went pretty offensive on devotions. As with like all of my SR set builds. So we got the other one devotion. We got Azraka or Cadence, like this also gives us attack speed here, right? Um, so these are like the two big physical tier 3 devotions. And also we got a Uz Ulzad, which is like the very nice physical tier 2 devotion. Really, really strong, gives you like a lot of that physical damage on top. And uh, what else is like important for this? Good is very important here because, well, this is like another. Um, Weapon damage based character, so Ghoul fits very very well, very nice and very strong circle breaker here. And since we're a physical build, we absolutely have to use Assassin's Mark. Assassin's Mark is the devotion that gives you the physical resistance reduction. So yeah, 32% on that one. And the other ones are like, okay, like Kraken is obviously very strong here as well, because, well, we're using a two-hander, and this gives you, like, lots of attack speed, and also some physical resistance, actually, for two-handers. So, yeah, in this case, Kraken is, like, super, super good for this two-hander build. Um, but, yeah, like, most of the other devotions are, like, mostly there to, like, get the affinity. Like, Throne, like, whenever you need purple affinity, Throne is really good. Here, slow resistance, Aether, Chaos, you know, it's stun reduction, really good. Um, then if you need like even more purple, well, the Wolverine gives me like a lot of, lot of TA here, for example, 4% TA, flat TA here, flat TA there, right? it's really good. And it also kind of makes up for like not having Watcher, like Watcher is still obviously better than Wolverine, but Wolverine is like a nice tier 1 devotion to get when you cannot get the Watcher. Uh, then also we got the Toad here which gives us like the th green and the purple that we need for the Kraken and also the tier 3 devotions, right? Um, but also it has like flat vitality and aether damage, which again get converted to physical, so yeah, nice here. Uh, and also lifesteal, also very good. Um, also I got the crane this time, which I don't really like personally that much, but yeah, we just got it for like the 5 yellow devotion points here, like affinity points here. Um, also the eel, like some defensive ability, some pierce resistance, some movement speed, and like most importantly, five blue affinity. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it actually. Now this devotion setup is a little bit low on attack speed actually. Like besides the Azraka node, we don't have any attack speed here. So I might maybe change this around later, but to like, for example, like what you can do is you cannot, you can like take out all run, right? You can skip all run here. You could like keep Azraka and then try to get, say, Dying God maybe, or like Aeon's Hourglass, maybe some attack speed nodes here, like Revenant or Jackal. Those are pretty nice as well. There's some pretty juicy stuff like over here at like blue and red, affinity, right? So, I mean, I like this a lot, but it's a little bit low on attack speed. Uh, yeah, you might switch this up later, but probably not anytime soon, like, I think this character is pretty much finished, and he's, like, very solid as he is. Um, but yeah, just keep it in mind that you can definitely tweak this around a bit. Now onto the gear. 
Well, the gear, as I said, like of the Leviathan, and we have Shader Ram set as like the core of the build, basically. Like the core, the the very core is just Leviathan. Um, so you can play this with like different sets that are easier to get, say Warborn, or maybe even Krieg set actually. Um, but yeah, and this I'm gonna show you the SR set setup first. So yeah, we got the Leviathan here. Uh, what you like need to watch out for on a Leviathan are high physical resistance, high attack speed, high cold to physical conversion, high flat physical damage, and high percent physical damage. Um, obviously, you can't get all of those high. Um, the one I got has like super high percent physical, super high flat physical, kind of lowish cold to physical conversion. Um, like okay-ish, but probably not the most ideal attack speed, and the same goes for physical resistance. So, yeah, I mean, you can definitely get an even better one, but I think this one is already pretty decent. Very much on the damage side of things, for sure. Um, now, the SR set, as always, you want to, like, have armor pieces that have 5% physical resistance, so the mask gives us 5%, chest 5%, and also mantle 5%. And the amulet gives me like good slow resistance, good chaos resistance, good elemental resistance. Not that much HP, like 500 is like the border, like everything above 500 is like good HP, everything below 500 is kind of low HP. But I mean the build has like enough HP anyway, so we don't really care that much about that. Uh, we rather care about like good slow resistance, right, like 80% slow resistance here, 48% physical resistance here. Those are like the important stats that you have to like work on. Um, yeah, other than SR set, we have also Chosses of Barbaros. These are like, well, super good for physical builds, obviously. They're like so good for so many builds, though. Like super, super good for physical builds. Uh, the Battle Cry gives us like much needed attack speed here. Um, yeah, really good. Now for the belt, we have like. There's just one option basically, right? Gladi Gladiator's Distinction. So yeah, you wanna like convert all the vitality damage to physical damage that you get from, uh, yeah, like the Bone Harvest for example. And also from like some of the weapon pool skills, right? And also this has like Gladiator's Presence, which is a like 200 melee and ranged bonus. So like lots of additional flat physical damage, 80%, uh, 80 offensive ability and 8% armor. So yeah, again, really, really strong. Uh, belt here for this build, fits perfectly. Uh, the metal, this one is a little bit interchangeable, but with SR set, this is, I believe, like the only way to. Unless you get like cadence and boots, I think that's like the only way to max out cadence. I, I mean, you could also get like cadence and rings, right? That's there. There are some ways, but uh, in this setup, I'm using like Mark of the Red Blade because we also like convert some of the aether to physical. It also gives you five percent attack speed here, like five percent. Send total speed really strong, uh, like Dreadblade proc, which again like has lots of physical damage, Reaping Strike, Cadence, bonuses, really good metal here. There are definitely other like possibilities you can go for here, but for my current setup, I just thought that, like I feel like this fits the best right now. Um, boots, these are crafted boots, wind shear greaves. Um, Again, like a proc with like more attack speed, which we really need on this build because you're kind of low on attack speed without any procs. So yeah, really good. I even rolled four percent armor on this one. Actually, that's kind of lucky. Um, Try to craft it at like Angrim for armor or physique. It's like what you want to have. Mm, about the gloves, these are actually non-mythical grasp of unchained might. You can use the mythical one, yes, or you can also use the sand reaver bracers, I believe. Um, but in this case, and also because I have like kind of lowish attack speed, I think non mythical Grasp of Unchained Might is actually like very, very good. Like this Unchained Fury proc here gives me another 10% attack speed for like 12 sec, I mean, 5 seconds, right? Um, like more offensive ability. I lose like 30 DA, but that's like kind of whatever, right? Um, that's not too much. So yeah, I, bet I, live, I think these are like super good here. Um, uh, yeah. Then we got the rings here, Ring of the Black Matriarch, to have like more attack speed, more cadence bonuses, and another 10% resistance reduction. Basically, like one of these is almost always a must-have on a physical build, like almost. 
And then also we have a Crown Lace Orders of Attack. Which is like not too hard to get, right? Like both ordered and off attack are like uh common pre and suffixes. Um but yeah, and I can understand that you probably might not have this one, right? And uh this basically like gives me a shit ton of chaos overcap. But you can see like you can take this off and like Chaos resistance is like not that terrible. Like you can switch around some augments and still have like decent chaos resistance even without this ring. I am. Um, there are like some other rings that you can definitely use here instead of uh, order of attack. Run this. And yeah, this basically sums up the gear. Right? Um, you might notice that I still have like survivors ingenuity here in my augments because well, they're still not revered with the Act Seven cults actually. I wanna get this up to revered as well, and then um, use um, Osiris Tempered here instead at least. This at least would give me even more DA and OA. There are also some other options, but yeah, we use for survivors for now and it's also really easy to get, as you all know. Also using the Ravager's Eye here for the weapon, which again gives me like a lot of DA and HP, and also for our Rune Augment, we use the Rune of Displacement because we need like a very defensive rune here as we already have Blitz for Engage, right? Yeah, Blitz for Engage and like the Teleport to Disengage. And like to Disengage, Teleport is basically like the best spell in the game. Anyway, I'm gonna show you like two more setups that you can go for that are easier to build than this one. And after that, I'm gonna show you the build in action. So, yeah. Okay, so when it comes to easier to make setups, I got like two setups here. Uh, both featuring Warborn, and then I got a third one featuring Creek Set. Okay, so the first Warborn setup is gonna feature my SR setup with like the change that it doesn't have SR set but like Warborn set and Avenger of Cairn instead. As you can see, like we have the same devotions and uh, like skills that are also like pretty much the same. We got some more pawns into like break morale here, but we lost plus one uh, necromancer actually. Actually, like plus two necromancer to be fair. Anyway, so we got uh, living living armors here in the chest and the shoulders, and also like a leather here on the belt this time around, and also switch around some of the augments, like patch up resistances better. Um, but yeah, this is like really good as well. Has thirty nine percent physical resistance. And still like huge weapon damage, probably even more than the SR setup actually. Uh, yeah, like this is a solid build as well without SR set. It's gonna be like a little a little bit squishier as you can see. Like we have less HP here, um, actually like three to four K less HP actually. So that's like not that good, I guess. But overall, it's like very solid. And you can always like take some points from Conning, as you can see here. You could like put down OA to say 3k for example, or like put up DA to say 2.9, right? And also this way you will have like more HP because physique will give you more HP than cunning. Um, yeah, this is what I would probably do when I like use no SR set. I would just put some more points from cunning back to physique instead of like having them cunning. And then the second one is basically my old DK, which I had. This is like a pre-forgotten gods build actually, um, so you can see like the three points from SR basically missing here, one point from SR here missing. Um, yeah, this also has like different devotions. As you can see, these are like more defensive. This is what I ran back in the day, and like patch one point oh point seven. So also, if you don't have the forgotten gods expansion, you can just run this setup and also like. The skier here, which you can like the, all of the skier except for like the, the emblem of the red stalker here, which <laughs> is just like a worse version of the same. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the teleport that I'm usually using. Um, all of the skier you can like use from like Ashes of Marmoth, right? You don't need Forgotten Gods for this setup. I'm gonna put like both these um, in the description. Um, there's like one thing you should do. Here that you should probably change, like you should probably change like this over to Bloodied Crystal by now, because Bloodied Crystal got buffed now and it's just like better than Runebound to pass on like most builds, and this build is also one of them. 
All right, and in the end, I want to show you one example of a even easier to build Leviathan DK here. Um, so this one basically just needs you to find the mythical Leviathan, right? And well, you kind of also need the Gladiator's distinction. But once you have like those two items, you can just make a build like this, right? Like you, as you can see, I have like any solar like legards here. Like this one is easy, super easy to farm. You will get like prefixes and suffixes on top of what you can see here. Same thing for Rider Crest, this is a very nice medal for like pretty much any soldier, like any physical soldier at least. And also some... Um, so yeah, you will get like even more stats on this if you find like any of this, right? This is just the, the naked medal without any suffix or prefix. And then you have like double coven storms here, which are, well, you can just buy them in Act 5, right? And the Empowered Essence of Baranoth here, which is like a blueprint which you kind of have to find. But usually, I think it's like uh, super easy to find, or you can even buy this actually. Not quite sure. And then, yeah, like you're using 4-piece Creek set here. 4-piece Creek set is also like kind of easy to farm, right? Uh, you can also just use like 5-piece. Um, but yeah, like if you have either these gloves or you have like the blueprints for the boots you can just like use four piece uh krieg and like use the gloves or the boots instead right um because like krieg doesn't only like give you the opportunity to play like an aether dk but also to play you like a physical dk right like all of these give you like physical stuff as well physical bonus as well not only aether stuff and like some of the flat aether you also convert to physical so, yeah, I mean, why not use, like, four or even five-piece Creek set with, like, a Leviathan, right? Um, it was, like, target farmable, right, so very easy to get. And, like, all these components should be, well, also kinda easy, right? Like, I'm not even using, uh, say, Reddit Crystal here. These are, like, Soul Shard and Rock of Illusions, like, Black Talos here. Um, okay, so I guess we will have to, like, find the blueprint for a prismatic diamond which might also be like viable and we got the seal of might here but if you take a look at the resistances here like here's vitality and bleed like you can also use something else and still have at least maxed out resistances right they won't be as over maxed as in this case but they're still like okay right and this allows you like to run the same devotions that my um, shadow realm set version of the build is using as well and also like easier to get back here with juggernaut so yeah i mean this build is like another option that you can go for if you don't have like all that many legendary items or like not many blueprints right so yeah i hope this one can also help you like enjoy this build even if you have like that much gear and actually you also don't even need the belt right because the leviathan weapon itself also converts like 50 percent of your vitality to physical so while it doesn't convert 100 percent you still get like pretty decent width to physical conversion already because of this and you can just use say the agenbog girdle here giving you like plus one all skills to soldier and vitality resistance um, but yeah, as you can see like you kind of want to like get more offensive ability from your like your suffixes through here, right? Um, so keep out for, say, of attack or of readiness as like a suffix. And for prefix, like anything that gives you, for example, aether or chaos resistance would be really good as well, say like ordered. Also gaining another plus one soldier allows you to like take out some pawns here from Ones that should only be soft cut, right? Like war cry, squad tactics, decorated soldier, scars of battle, um, and like either push more points here, or like you can increase the strength of your WPS here, um, as you prefer. Right? Also, yeah, this will give you like, but yeah, twenty six fifty OA here without any B or suffixes on this. It's pretty nice. Right, so first of all, let's check out a dummy kill time here.
Alright, this is like a kinda slow zombie kill time, as you can see, like 43, 42 seconds, right? That's uh, really slow. Um, keep in mind, though, that like our kill speed will be way faster when we're like in combat. First of all, because dummies don't proc Spectral Wrath, right? It's not proc by the dummy, so we lose like some resistance re uh, reduction here against the dummy. Also, we have like so many attack speed procs, like Battle Cry. Um, Vinci around, like uh, Unchained Fury here. Uh, also, like, whenever we go low, like Prismatic Rage as well. So, yeah, like, dummy kill time is, like, really slow against, compared to, say, uh, like a real boss kill. So, yeah. Let's just kill some real bosses here. So the one thing that you have to absolutely always keep in mind with this build is that you have like such a high HP pool that like dropping down to like 50% of your HP is not that scary. So and also like you have so many circuit breakers, right? Like that proc at 50%, 45%, 35%, 33%, right? Even Serenity Radic, for example, right? So um yeah, don't like stop attacking unless like man here's will proc and you have like everything else on cooldown. Just like keep on attacking. You're gonna heal up with like ghoul or you're gonna absorb a lot with like uh, shattered ram set, prismatic diamond, etc. Right? So never like go back or like never like run away, right? Just keep on attacking. The only thing that you also have to like keep in mind though, and that might be super scary sometimes, is uh, fumble. So if you're like fighting, for example, Slavsar or um, some of these like poison traps here that have like the poison pools that uh, let you fumble, basically means that your attacks are gonna miss. Then, well, you're not gonna last you when your attacks are missing. So, and also you're like kind of slow hitting. So when you like, I don't know, fumble like three times in a row. That's gonna be like a long time without any love steal. So um, yeah, it's like the world is left definitely like worse when it comes to fumble than say a dual build character or like a caster, anyways. So just keep in mind that and like try to like not be too afraid of, of like when it comes to dropping HP, but also be like super careful about not standing inside of fumble pools. Uh, stuff like that. So yeah, here you also like buy better shells and frozen hearts, right? When they when he gives them to you, and also you like check out these marks here, like these medals. You might some fi find some good ones here, or like some rings, right? Or say I don't know, maybe you need a belt here, or like a two-hander for your range two-handed lightning, like promise strike build, right? Also, this guy sells you blueprints, so yeah, always check him out. You might have that one blueprint that you don't have yet. Yeah, speaking of fumble, this is like the king of fumble, right? Slavzar Aethergaze. He has lots of fumble pulls, so let's see how we fare against this guy here. You can see like fumble, fumble, fumble. Uh, I mean, we're really tanky. We just drop like Mark of Torment here on top, and there we go. This like SR set version is like really, really tanky. I remember having like more trouble with this guy when I was using the Warborn set, for example. 
It's like my old DK. But yeah. Also Warborn is like a little bit more damage though on the other hand, so. This build definitely trades tankiness for I mean damage for tankiness. It's not like that much worse when it comes to damage though, like it's just a, like a little bit worse. But like really a lot more tanky that than my uh, older version. As you can see like the, the stones that even like hurt me, the kitty didn't like scratch me and the scrab is gonna well the crabs are kinda easy to defeat anyway, so Oh, that's like the perfect run. We also got the Kuba Cover here. Seems good. Let's try to get him. Might wanna like move out of his pools every now and then a bit. But I mean, you can't see me like tanking all of this without like really any trouble to be honest. Yeah, I should like move out of the pools a little bit at least. <laughs> All these pools. What the hell? Stone hide could cover Hell yeah. That's that's a good one. Alright, Mr. Tree, let's see how they're against you here. So, like, stage 1 should be, like, super easy. And stage 2... Well, you gotta, like, move out of the volcanoes, right? That's about it. Ah, oh, these ones here. Yeah, there you go. Pretty smooth uh, Gargo Ball experience here, like... Doesn't really seem to be of any threat for this character. And yeah, I mean... <laughs> you know this place by now probably better than I do. Edge of Reality, low Curse Dungeon. Um, yeah, like whenever you enter this area, just make sure that you have like maxed out or like at least 60 to 70 percent freeze resistance. This build has like 156. So, oh yeah. And also, if you want to like farm the dark one set, you should kill these rift claimed adherents, right? Let's actually kill all of them here. That's gonna be some streamer luck, holy shit. Two out of four in one run. Huh. Didn't quite make it three out of four. Let's check the last guy as well. Like, uh, he's a little bit further down here in this dungeon. A little bit annoying to fight and kill him actually, but let's do it here. There he is. Oh, no proc on this one. Like, no drop on this one. Oh well. Still pretty good, like 2 out of 4 in one run. 
Really good. Really, really good. Any elites here? Oh yeah, there's actually one more elite now. Let's get some blooms maybe? Fizz bloom man. Oh, okay, maybe not. It's like a walk in the park here with those characters, holy shot. It's not tanky. Against Lokar, I mean, always feel free to like use at least Royal Jellies, right? These are like super cheap to mo to craft and also check out your fire resistance. If you have like kind of low fire resistance, you can use like a fire um, ointment, right? But, like fire resistance, which also reduces your burn damage that you take. So, I mean, burn duration, right? So that's really good. Um, but yeah, we can just take this guy naked right on this character. Now remember, we have like certain uh, defensive abilities to like cycle through, right? We have uh, Mark of Torment, an HP pot, got uh, Ghoul, got Prismatic Diamond. So as long as he didn't prop Menhir's Will or Serenity, which he actually did right now. You can just like keep on attacking, right? A proc man here as well in the end. Um, but like it's kind of fine, right? You just have to like play around your circuit breakers, and then you can just like keep on facing him. <clears throat> and if you don't like to play around like Serenity and many as well circuit breakers as well, you can like just kite a bit more. You can always play this safer than I just did because like I was literally just face taking him. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this build as well as you did with all the others. Be free to like, leave a comment, like, dislike, any kind of feedback is appreciated. And yeah, like, write me in the comments which build you would like to see next as well. If you want like a shaman to hand it or like, I don't know, like a acid dervish, I don't know. Uh, I would probably like make it an acid dervish, but or for a meme build. Um, anyways, thank you so much, everyone, for watching, and I will see you on the next one.